it's like uh, Satan, but uh, I'm, I'm going through levels of, of Satan and of horns. I haven't put them on yet. You know, not until I'm, I'm sure that I'll be able to keep the power after I die in his soul, you know. Because having powers in the human body is easier to psychics, you know. Uh, I've never, I knew right from wrong in my mind, uh, I mean, I, had, I knew a Satanist and breaking rules and, and all that. But, but I never considered myself that. And if I wanted to break a rule or something, I would I would do it. I'd get, I, I wouldn't have to try to think, convince myself to do it. I would just do it. Yeah. miracle child because he was the fourth kid and he kept mom and dad's marriage together for a little while. Uh, that mom thought was a miracle because dad would later leave but it was also a miracle because her doctor said she could not have another kid. So when she had him she was like wow he's my miracle baby. He was a little hyper uh, I remember her saying and uh, when he was 12 wrote a paper on assassinating the president. At that point, I was out of the house. I'm eight years older than he is, you know. Uh, uh, a lot of us didn't know what was going on there. I guess 15, 16, trouble, a few signs of schizophrenia, maybe. Lots of doctors, lots of counseling. He. Uh, there, he would threaten to kill her all the time. There were times he would tie her up. Uh, he would say, uh, I don't know if I should kill the other ones, meaning us, first and let you watch, or should I kill you first? You know, and stuff like that. Ms. Rush. Your Honor, Troy's mother indicates that she brought the matter forward and made complaints so that he could get help. But I can represent that she was very, very frightened of Troy and fearful for her own safety. He kept telling her that he was gonna kill her and she tried to get help. Uh, and, and there was no help. She tried very hard. Doctors, judges, jailers, you know. He had described to her on previous occasions just how he might go about breaking her neck and the sounds of bones breaking. And she knew, and this was something she was willing to do, to be killed by him to treat him finally and to save the family, which is what she committed to doing when she was very young. That's what she wanted to do. She wanted to have a very safe, you know, very safe family. I'm going to impose and stay a sentence. Additionally, pursuant to 973.09, the court will grant the privilege of probation for 60 months with the goals of rehabilitation and the protection of society and mind. Court's adjourned. And she would always say, you know, oh, us kids will always have each other and, and she'll always take care of us. And instead of him killing us, she decided that it, it was gonna be her. Take it easy. They probably got into an argument. He, he pushed her too hard or something.
I don't know the last thing that he said to her, but I remember the last thing that I said to her. I said, I will be all right. I was visiting her, and in the driveway she came out and she hugged me really, really tight, and she started to cry, and I thought that she thought something was gonna happen to me, and I said, Mom, I'm gonna be all right. <sighs> she knew that he was gonna kill her. She carries a bat in my room, and I got up, and you know, it's like she's giving me my bat. Of her, and I thanked her by getting up, grabbing the bat, and hitting over the head four times. You know, I, I don't, I don't know why I would do that. I handled the situation different than the rest of my family. They saw, you know, this horrible, horrible tragedy. But because I have always believed, uh, known about life beyond and excited about that prospect, uh, I wasn't devastated like they were. People hear that a son kills a parent, they're all, they, they blame the parent. Uh, Troy killed mom a, a couple months before the Menendez thing hit, and everybody is like, oh, you know, what did the parent do? I wrote a screenplay, tributing mom, explaining the story. You know, she did nothing in this, it, she was not to blame, you know. Eventually I couldn't sleep and I decided I'm going to make this film myself. I have to. And the only way that I thought to do it was using dolls. Or else play all the parts myself and I thought if I play mom that's, you know, that's, that's not fair, that's funny. You know, so I'm an artist and I wanted to tell the story my way. When I went to uh, Lincoln, everybody uh, was. Uh, I met I met friends there, and uh, then we we would smoke dope and that's when that stuff. Yeah. And then I went to hash, and she had a problem with me, and she'd she'd say, uh, at first she said, uh, you got a problem with school, you got school for, but she'd tell me what I had a problem with, and I, I okay, you know, you're my mom, I believe you, and. Uh, we went for treatment for school phobia, and we were just talking, and he's, he's telling me to feel hot or paranoid or this and that. I didn't think it was dominant, so. The, you know, I, the only thing I can think of is she, she used to call me a bad kid all the time, you know? And then one day she didn't, and then she's dead, you know? I mean, I don't know what to think about it. I just didn't want to hear that. Uh, one time, uh, 
we had this dog named Sassy, and uh, I was in a home alone with her, and she started yelping like she was kicked, right? So I'm watching this, and uh, you know, and, and yelping and yelping and yelping, and, and I'm sure the neighbors heard, and I know if they would come by, they'd say, Troy kicked the dog. So I, I relaxed right there and just let the dog yelp. So, so if they want to come pers say something, persecute me, or say whatever they want to say, I was ready to take it because I knew I was in the right. I was trying to figure out what to do. And so I decided that it's probably best to pick her up and drop her. So I picked her off the ground because I knew, you know, that she was jumping this heights when she was younger. I figured, well, that wasn't going to hurt anything. So I dropped the dog down and, and he stopped yelping, you know. I went unduly far to understand his self-destructiveness. In a scene where I played Troy, I rubbed a lit cigarette out on the flesh of my arm. Troy did this to test his pain threshold. He was trying to feel. This made me realize what he did to fit in and how he punished himself for not fitting in. Since I was in jail at the time, I might have uh, thought of, of Charlie Manson in the eyes and went, went from there. Like, I could have went into, you know, if like you sometimes think that prisoners are cool to each other and everything, and, you know, they'll fight for you or whatever, protect you, maybe like a big guy, a little guy, or just rape or whatever. I, I used him and he uh, showed me what to do with this power. And, you know, he, he says he's Jesus Christ and all that, but here I am and I've I'm, I realized I know I'm not perfect or anything, but I, I got this tremendous ability. I, now, the thing is, I just, when I was starting to remember things, uh -huh. I remember that I walked into a, the jail one time and my face started shaking. Uh -huh. <coughs> and then s something happened and I had this instinct, so I, you know, I just reacted quick to it and I was hit with something, you know. And I, I responded naturally back, you know. and. It gave me all power that I really have. Troy, you present a very great dilemma for the courts and the criminal justice system. At this point in this court, I'll be honest with you. I don't know whether to tell you that you're mentally ill or to tell you that you're antisocial. I think it's probably a mixture of both. Yeah, if mom forgave Troy, uh, always, all through everything, you know, that's, that was her little baby. He couldn't do any wrong, and I think she also understood, uh, as I've come to understand, that uh, I'm not going to say he was doing the best he could do. I don't believe that. But he was operating from a dark place. Uh, I don't know. I don't remember being angry. I don't remember her saying anything. She was just acting real nice. Oh, uh, it was a premeditated thing because earlier you would go into a friend's house and asked if they had a gun. And the friend said, why? And you said, because my mom's in the car. I want to blow her head off. And this was a couple hours earlier. So you had, this is something you, you intended to do. I don't think it was a little, uh, a, 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 a spout thing. I don't think that, uh, it was, I think it, it was in, intentional. It's something you wanted to do for quite some time. Well, I, well, I, I had a gun. I, I could I could have used it, and I wouldn't have gone to somebody else and asked them. So I, I, I don't remember having that, and I don't think that ever happened. You know, if, if I was going to do murder, I'm sure I, I would have tried to get away with it, you know. And after I did, I, I just pled guilty and everything. Well, well, no, 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 excuse me, but uh, after you did, well, you called the FBI and said, I did it. I never did that. And I don't know how, how there could be a voice print of that, you know. You called 911. And Craig identified the voice. I never called 911. Uh, do you remember how long it was before you were apprehended after the murder? I remember I drove 
I picked up a hitchhiker, all right? I drove to Florida, Pensacola, went to Mexico, and to Lebrado. And do you know how long that took? Drove straight. <laughs> I don't know. Because, okay. okay. I had no idea. Okay, because before you said it took a day, and you were quite sure of that, and you were going for a week. I, I said, I, I, well, that, it, it does seem like a day when yeah, you drive. I, I guess so, and, <coughs> and you were also... I, was, I, was, I didn't sleep or anything. Sure. <coughs> you, uh, you know, if it was longer than a day, I probably would have slept. But yeah, it was... A, a, I'm sure it's impossible to drive there in a day. When she asked me to go to him, to, to forgive him, uh, to help him. I was doing her a favor because I prayed all this time. What can I do for you? I was doing him a favor because the asshole was in trouble. I got there and here was this little boy, this little brother I never had. He was, he needed he was just, he was different. He was uh, vulnerable and the edge was gone. He was out, he was gone. That's what I got. I got this, this, uh, this purer uh, little brother who was very gone. But, you know, I've always wanted that closeness. Now I, I just want to be a model inmate and, well, and not be tough anymore because I, I'm feeling a sense of well, I'm, I'm gonna have to be forgiven, for just just forgiven, and that would be everybody would forget, and you know, whenever that that comes to me. What it is is uh, that we can we can both disagree about things, and, and we understand each other like that. Yeah, we we respect each other, even if we don't uh, agree on the same thing, and that's fine because the. Uh, the love we have for each other is not conditional, and so it doesn't matter the conditions. Um, I know that uh, this is my little brother, and there was a while when uh, I forgot that, and I'm very glad that uh, we have this relationship again. And he knows how important he is to me. You yeah. know, he calls me, and uh, you know, we talk for 20 minutes, and I say, "You made my day." And, he, and, uh, and, you know, he did. And I'm sure there's some days of his that I've made, too. Yeah. So that's pretty cool. We're pretty proud of that. Yeah. Yeah, we're very proud of that. Life may not go exactly the way you think life is supposed to go and something steps in the way and for you to get past that something and to go on with your life you know to accept that something probably and not fault it that 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 would be forgiveness now what is so crazy about the AIDS is what I want to know huh I don't know why, why the rest of the deck saying hey you guys you guys are crazy you know what? You only gave me seven cards. Really? I'm taking eight. And look what I picked. Oh, 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 to be used at my discretion. I'll go with the, uh, we'll stay with the heart thing here. To be used at my discretion. Don't forget I have this. Okay. I've got this guy. Yeah. Do you think, uh, <laughs> do you think about mom up in heaven, where she is, or if she's there? Because... Uh there was a point where you were worried that if if and when you died you'd go to heaven and she would get people to beat you up yeah. in heaven yeah. because she was really such a nice lady to everybody and I, I you know I we had problems and I can say I didn't like her at times and, and but she was really nice to people and people liked her over a lot it was a big big thing you know I thought that in heaven I'd see her and she would be just furious and angry, and that all these people that she had met and, <coughs> and becomes friends with would attack me and just hold me down. And what what has changed your opinion about that, or do you still think that? <coughs> I, I don't think that. Uh, just, just because that that it, it was it was like a feeling, you know. Oh. I thought that was gonna happen. That that's gone away. And, and I think a lot of that came from you feeling guilty, like you should be punished. 
I think that you were telling yourself, I deserve to be punished, and thus you, this is what's going to happen to you. That's what you were thinking. I think you could be right because at, at one time there, I was feeling a lot of guilt, and, you know, and that might have set into me that okay, now I'm going to be punished, and then that's it. I don't have to pay. Oh, that's right. I forgot about that. I'm going to have to use it now. Spades. Spades. Looks like clubs, but I'm saying spades. I, 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 I'm I not really sure of my emotions at times. and uh, I need to talk to Tom and, and hear, hear him talk to me. And, you know, i got to hear that he's okay. So then I, I know that whatever I'm doing, well, it, it maybe I'm, I'm doing some, you know, just not acting right or something, and, and I know that, well, if he's doing okay, well, then I'm probably doing okay, too. You know, I'm probably acting all right when, when I think that I'm, I may be doing something strange or just you know, not talking enough or talking too much. It's hard to, to fit in with people like this. I think I understand Troy pretty well because uh, we were both very introverted and have some of the same talents, and Troy's an excellent writer and drawer. And so I try to support that in him, and I know that it makes me feel very good when I can do something like that. And I know that when you look at your work, you're pretty proud, aren't you? Yeah. Because it's good stuff. Yeah. yeah. Right. When I was returned to him or he to me, uh, yeah, e everything, uh, everything blossomed I in my life. Uh, part of that was, was being, was going through a miracle, you know. Uh, when that happens, you, you realize what's important, and that's just that's just the truth there. And love is the truth, and, and that's what's there. Uh, yeah, I gained a great deal. personal definition of forgiveness. Uh, well, I, I, t I tell you what I learned is that uh, uh, the person that forgives is the one that gets the gift. Because I thought I was doing her a favor and him a favor. Then I was the one that got everything. So, you know, that that's, that's what forgiving, you know, is. And I know that. You know.